Finally, it has arrived. After a long-awaited Kickstarter campaign, the Lynx R1 made it out of the factory and is now reaching its first backers. So I'm extra careful while opening it to keep the achievement of years of development by Stan Larocque and his team in the best possible shape. And here it is. Look at that classy packaging. Real cool. It is now in my hand and I can barely believe it. But I'm sure you are as patient as I am to see it, so let's take it out. The padding inside is well to protect it, but for long distance shipping, it might have another say. For now, let's store it properly, as you never know when you might need it. A great image of the Lynx's unique feature, the beautiful 4-fold catadioptric free from prisms, is on the cover with the motto, one device, endless possibilities, leading to some inspiring thoughts. So what else can we see on this box? Let's have a tour. Mine is not protected by a plastic wrapping, so it must have gone through some previous inspections. Definitely a Lynx R1, no mistake for sure. At the back of the box, we have a brief description of what it contains and a schematic view of the Lynx R1. It is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 1 chip and with UltraLeap technologies for hand tracking as the Lynx aims for natural interactions without controllers. There are two seeds on the side of the box to ensure its content and the sleeve slides quite naturally without it. No hassle at all and the box opens by itself. Oops. Maybe I should have not slided it that way. So let's put it down to reach now the gem inside. I have to say, it feels strange to have it now in front of me after waiting so long for, to own my own Lynx. And here it is, the Lynx R1, looking straight at me to welcome me into the world of mixed reality. He looks so great. At the center of the box is a container with all the provided accessories but we'll look at them right after the main beast. This is a first batch model with non-issue with the shipping hard plastic, which can leave a mark on the Lynx matte finish. But don't worry, it will be taken care of in the next batch and existing one will have a swap option early 2024, as promised by Stan. No controller here neither, as the Lynx is targeting natural interaction with hand tracking. So let's inspect our Lynx a little bit closer. It's very easy to take it out and it looks quite sturdy too. Let's take a tour of Lynx R1 button sensors and connectors. There are two RGB cameras at the front for the pass-through mode and each side has a 6 dot camera, hand tracking and infrared LEDs. On the left side, there is a 3.5 jack port for audio and a micro SD card slot to extend its storage. Incredible to have such a small form factor. At the bottom, there are some vents, but also the included microphones. Definitely a first batch unit, with a little screw a bit loose, but nothing too serious so far. Compared to other Kickstarter I backed, it is really professional. On the right hand side, we have the up and down volume controls, the power button with multiple actions wired in. So let's flip it down. At the top, we have the front translation push button for easy positioning of the links. We also have the USB-C charging port and two configurable action button. So now let's look at its back. Look at these beautiful prisms, like never seen before. They both can be adjusted independently for best experience. We also have a proximity sensor and two magnets to hook up the fashion interface for VR mode. So now, on the top of the links, we have the overhead strap anchors at the front and at the back if one needs sturdier fitting. Two stereo speakers are positioned on each side. At the back, there is a tiny knob with the Lynx logo inside to adjust the visor's position. 
the soft magnetic forehead forms already mounted at the front and at the back and can be removed for easy cleaning. I'm really enjoying this moment. Let's put it aside to look at the accessories. The central top lid opens to reveal the accessories and sadly, no golden prism gem for me. A USB-C cable to connect the links for charging and development use cases is included and fitted with an angle connector. There is also a getting started card with the basic instructions. Now look at the magnetic lock blocker that makes me think of Batman's helmet, to be honest. Strangely, it has four magnets, but only two are visible on the Link's back panel. The optional overhead strap is included, even though wearing the Link's is already quite steady without it. Let's see now how the fashion interface on the Link's look like once assembled. The fashion interface has also a nose light blocker to fully ensure no light leakage while in VR mode. Once positioned, the interface just locks itself to the links as so. It fits perfectly and doesn't move at all. I can't wait to move to the next step, but that will be for another video. Bye!